Welcome to the Jazz Torch, a series featuring some of today's leading jazz legends along with the next generation of jazz stars as the great tradition of passing the Jazz Torch continues. I'm your host, Mitch Glickman, the music director of the Symphonic Jazz Orchestra. Today's episode features legendary bassist, band leader and composer, John Clayton, along with up and coming saxophonist, vocalist and songwriter, Grace Kelly. We open the show today with the Grace Kelly Quartet performing her original work, Philosophical Flying Fish. Discover 30 years of opera in Santa Monica. Discover the Verdi Chorus. I'm 
here with co-leader and co-founder of the Grammy-nominated Clayton Hamilton Jazz Orchestra, as well as bassist and composer extraordinaire John Clayton. Now John, so much of this jazz torch, this tradition, is passing it on from generation to generation. And I know for you, you had some wonderful experiences pretty early on in your life. As a teenager, working with the great Ray Brown, and then early on, Count Basie Orchestra. Not too bad. Mm. So for you, how does the Jazz Torch translate? What does it mean to you to have these experiences and now pass it on? Well, the Jazz Torch uh, really lets me realize the things, the lessons that I was given by those elders. Ray Brown, Milt Jackson, all these kinds of people were telling me that they were helping me because someone helped them and I needed to do the same. And that's really the, the, the credo that we musicians live by. You know, you don't keep it to yourself you make sure that you share it. Uh, understanding, of course, that the people that you share it with are going to add whatever their life experiences and, and fantasies and ideologies are to the mix and out comes something that's influenced by jazz. It takes it further, but with, the, with a new twist. Well, that's a great example because the Clayton Hamilton Jazz Orchestra is gonna soon celebrate their 30th anniversary, which is pretty amazing in and of itself. How much did your Count Basie experience translate into what you have with your band? Oh gosh, uh, a lot, um, but the, it, uh, the Clayton Hamilton Jazz Orchestra is really a reflection of the experiences and influences that Jeff Clayton, my brother, and Jeff Hamilton, my dear friend, uh, have had in their musical lives as well. So Basie really was the was the platform that allowed me to explore writing for a large ensemble. I remember the first piece that I wrote for the band, I had not had any lessons in writing. I didn't know what the heck I was doing, but uh, you know, I knew how to transpose and all that sort of thing. So I they invited me to write something and uh, the band played it, they hated to rehearse, they rehearsed it and it sounded terrible. <laughs> it was embarrassing. Uh, and uh, the guys were saying, okay, you got the right idea, Clayton, that's, you know, I knew it sucked. But th I was encouraged by them to keep going on and pursuing this. So I, I started analyzing a lot of the great pieces in the Count Basie Orchestra's book and uh, transcribed and really kind of wrote my second piece, uh, which the band rehearsed, uh, called Blues for Stephanie. And uh, at that first rehearsal, I remember them playing through it, and I looked down, and their, their feet were padding. That's a good sign. That's a very good sign. And uh, at the end of it, Count Basie said to me those famous words. He looked at me and said, let's do it one more time. Nice. Uh, that was really the beginning of me being encouraged to do more and more things for the Basie band. So the thing that I learned from that, one of the big lessons was do not write for uh, a generic sound write instead for human beings. So when I wrote for Count Basie's band, I was writing for Basie's piano and for Freddie Green's mm -hmm. guitar and for Sonny Cohn's trumpet and so on. Uh, uh, and that really allowed the music to have a kind of a flavor in life that, that made it very personal. So I learned a lot of that. And those sort are of pretty thing. unique experiences too. So how much of your education happened on the bandstand versus a formal education? Well, th they all kind of came together, but on the bandstand was the biggest chunk in terms of practical education. The things I learned in school needed to be in the background. Mm -hmm. you know, I had to no, know how to hold the instrument, how to efficiently play my scales and all that sort of thing, but it was Count Basie looking at me and showing me what he wanted me to play with his left hand. Uh, you know, that kind of, kind of thing uh, it, it was invaluable. And uh, the instructions from the guys, the uh, understanding the timing of how one song went to the next and uh, how Count Basie dealt with talking to the audience. Mm -hmm. All of those, you know, real life on the bandstand yeah. lessons were, were huge. But a great example of the jazz torch. So in a lot of things, Count Basie gave to you and now you're able to pass it along to that next generation as well. So I know education is an important part. You were a professor for quite some time. Do you still teach privately? Uh, I teach privately, but um, I'm so serious about teaching that I have to make sure that I do not damage the student. And uh, if someone wants to study with me, uh, I think usually at the ages that they come to me, they really need steady ears. They need some, someone who um, can really listen to them regularly. 
and with my lifestyle and the touring and that sort of thing, the only way that I will work with a student privately is if I team teach. So I have an assistant, great bass player named Christoph Ludi, nice. and uh, we usually combine forces to help a student. And that way, if I'm on the road, he can work with them and vice versa. What a great opportunity for that generation to have both hmm. of you working together. Well, John is going to come back and join us with Grace Kelly Quartet for this next song. This is actually a wonderful new piece that John and Grace wrote together. It's called Strollin' with JC and GK. And as they perform, notice this musical conversation that occurs. They're all going to have a solo. They're all going to talk amongst themselves. We'll be right back. what gratitude means. Nicholas? To be thankful. Writing letters to our military is a great way to say thank you for their service. Frisco! Somebody loves you. Dear soldier, thank you for keeping me safe. You're my hero. To donate or send a care package to America's Heroes, visit OperationGratitude.com.
riding a bicycle can seem like child's play. But then, one day, something happened. I didn't know how to stop it. I didn't know there was help. Until someone told me. Providing access to justice, the Legal Aid Foundation of Los Angeles can help with domestic violence issues, eviction defense, government benefits, immigration, and other civil legal issues. John and I are now joined by Grace Kelly, the youngest person ever named in the Downbeat Critics Poll six consecutive years when she was named the magazine's alto saxophone rising star, started in 2009 all the way up to today. So Grace, I know you've had such wonderful experiences with some mentors, people like Phil Woods, Wynton Marsalis, and Lee Konitz. How have those experiences shaped your career? It's just been an incredible experience. I mean. These are musicians that I've been listening to since I was a little girl studying music and I had a stack of CDs and I'd put them in, you know, when I was going to bed, when I was waking up. And so getting to, to work with two alto saxophone greats that I've been, you know, listening to and idolizing for all this time is really kind of a, a pinch me thing. And same with um, John Clayton, having him as a teacher and just all these amazing experiences I feel extremely fortunate and just blessed to get to learn their stories and, and musically I think the, the most um, amazing thing about it is being on stage and kind of the osmosis effect because all of a sudden I, f I hear myself playing things that I've never heard before and just being around them. It's the life on the bandstand. That's yeah. where the education takes place. Well, you bring up an interesting point, being on the bandstand. And there's a great historical moment for you this summer. Newport Jazz Festival, 60 years old. Yeah. You were sharing the stage with the member who was there on the very first year. So this great jazz torch from 60 years past is being passed down to you. Yeah. So what was it like to work with Lee at Newport this summer? I was, it was just amazing. I was so excited to be asked and, and to join him. Um, we played a few of his own songs and mm -hmm. Lenny Tristano's song. But yeah, to think that Lee Konitz was there when he was in his early 20s for the very first Newport Jazz Fest. I mean, it's just so cool. Just thinking about it blows my mind. But it was a beautiful musical experience. It was great and the audience was wonderful. It was a lot of fun. So the da jazz torch continues being passed on. So John, I'm curious, what do you see as the difference now in this generation's challenges? What's different to become a jazz musician today? Uh, there's more music to choose from. And I do say choose from because no one c can expect these young people to learn all of these j styles that mm -hmm. feed into jazz, uh, which is kind of cool. You know, they, they obviously there's some kind of basis that we all have to learn, some sort of common, uh, common vocabulary that we share. But adding to that is really a, a fantastic pool of choices, whether it's going to be hip hop or it's going to be reggae or it's going to be you know something from South America you name it mm -hmm. there are all these different kinds of music that the jazz musician now has at their disposal whereas if you look back in the 1940s for instance you didn't have as many choices that you could make that you could reach to and have mm -hmm. influence your music uh, so that's that's a very cool thing some I think that the people that lean more toward the negative side find that a bit daunting. I don't think it's daunting at all. I think it's a, a fabulous buffet of styles Option, that we yeah. can, yeah, options that we can. Yeah. New territories, choose. new discoveries. Exactly. And Grace, for you, what do you feel some of the challenges are? The challenges? Um, I think that just the world that we live in today has so many distractions, like as far as the computer is such a great thing and, you know, you can pull up any recording in YouTube and all of that, but uh, there's uh, a challenge is just staying focused. I mean, and that's not just for music, but for anything. And so by talking about learning on the bandstand, for me, that's been um, one of the best ways that I can learn. And I've been extremely focused and able to really be in the moment. But it's definitely a challenge, I know, for myself and other people uh, my age, just to, you know, keep focused. And I think, too, there's some challenges that, that we hear, um, they're almost sort of beat into us, you know, like, 
you got to get a job, you got to make a living, you got to pay the rent, you got to pay back the student loan, mm -hmm. and before you know it, if you don't have the right balance with all of these things, you're focusing on that, on those, not to say that they aren't important things, but if your balance isn't right, you focus so much on that mm -hmm. that the music suffers. Mm -hmm. And uh, I find that, that when we teach these young people about the life considerations that they have to deal with, that we need to make sure we're offering it in a way that allows them to, to, to bring the music as high as it is so that when finally the doors open for a young person, they have something to offer mm -hmm. versus really understanding the networking and mm -hmm. the uh, music business and all those other aspects. And then finally when you're on stage, <coughs> oops, it's, it's, uh, it's really below par. Mm. So it's about balance for me. All right. Well, we're going to wrap it up here and take a quick break. We're going to come back with a wonderful song with Grace Kelly Quartet. Riding a bicycle can seem like child's play. But only if you're playing indoors. <laughs> Cars and bikes need to play together. Play it safe. Ride by the rules. Hey, share the road. Thank you for joining us for this edition of the Jazz Torch. We close the show with a final performance from saxophonist and vocalist Grace Kelly, performing another original, Nighttime Star.
too high to touch the ground and no one can bring me down you are my world you are my smile you're my baby you bring me to that higher place we love we laugh we make mistakes